Sir. Hello, everybody. It's a beautiful day in South Carolina today. Thank you all for coming out. And uh, thank you all for all of you who have served South Carolina through preservation and being here. Um, this is the 24th annual Preservation Honor Awards, and we have been fortunate that um, Governor McMaster, yes, it's summertime in South Carolina. Right. And um, uh, we sincerely appreciate Governor McMaster being here and helping us uh, serve these. I do want to make several um, uh, uh, recognitions. Eric Emerson from South Carolina Department of Archives and History is here. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Ray Sigma and Agnes Wilcox on our board of directors is here. And from our staff, Suzanne Brooks, who helps keep me straight and make sure everything happens the way it's supposed to. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce Honorable Henry McMaster, Governor of the great state of South Carolina. Great, great state of South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Yo, I'll take just a minute. This is a great thing. I've always enjoyed this, and particularly uh, there are a lot of us uh, that are very interested in history, and a lot of us have learned over the years that if you don't know what happened before, you have no clue what might happen next. So it's always important to, to learn your history, to know your history, and I, I've learned that you, 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 you never do get to the bottom of it. It's, it's just like it's an endless mystery. But one way to, to help us understand our history and our people and the decisions they made and why they made them and their talents and their ambitions and their dreams is to look at the things that they built that are still here. And we are standing in one right now. This uh, took 50 Temple Ligon, took 50 years to, to build, I think. Finally finished in about 1903. Uh, it's gorgeous. By the way, I love history, and we got some history. Temple and Agnes Hines. Now, we all grew up together, about two or three houses. <laughs> this ain't the place for that. <laughs> but it is a glorious history of South Carolina. We've, we've uh, starting in 1670, of course, the, the explorers before that were writing back to their sovereign saying they'd never seen such a place. This was in the New World. Never seen anything like it with the abundance, the riches, the, the animals, the, the weather, the, uh, the, the trees, the water, the water, the water. And uh, they did not comment on the gnats. They did comment on, <laughs> on the water and the weather. But um, we're on, this, this is kind of sandy soil here. This is uh, million, millions of years ago. This would be standing in the ocean. The late waves would be lapping up here. And from what I hear, it might be coming again. So we've got to keep that in mind. But that's all about history. And to have these buildings being preserved, to have sites being preserved, when we learn their history, it helps particularly the young people find something on which they can hang the knowledge, the bits and pieces of understanding that they're trying to gather on a journey through life and helps some of us who've been on that journey for a while understand more and put it all together so we can teach it to those coming behind us. So Mike, this is a great thing, what you and your organization do, and all these organizations, people, that's what it is. This is a great thing that you're doing, and on behalf of about five million happy, proud South Carolinians, I'm pleased to be here to, to add my support to, and theirs, to what you're doing. Thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. All right. Let's get started. Each year, thousands of South Carolinians work to preserve the state's legacy that is reflected in our historic building structures and sites. Since 1995, the South Carolina Department of Archives and History, Preservation South Carolina, and the Office of the Governor has recognized exceptional accomplishments in the preservation, rehabilitation, and interpretation of our architectural and cultural heritage with a series of statewide awards. These efforts demonstrate the outstanding commitments preserving South Carolina's history. Therefore, the South Carolina Department of Archives, Preservation South Carolina, are proud to recognize its exemplary work in historic preservation in South Carolina. These awards were selected through a selection panel process. Uh, the, the list of those who are on that uh, panel are a representative from the Office of the Governor, Preservation South Carolina, three folks, uh, the President and two members of the board, uh, three representatives from Archives and History, uh, representative of uh, South Carolina African American Heritage Commission, the Confederation of South Carolina Local Historic Societies, a representative from the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and from the South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. Now, let's start with the awards. The Elected Official Award. 
The elected official honor award is presented each year to an elected official in recognition of significant achievements or landmark efforts in the support of historic preservation in South Carolina. A political leader who has demonstrated a dedication to the preservation of South Carolina's historic buildings, structures, or sites may receive the elected official award. First elected, in 2010, our award recipient's leadership has been characterized not only by his firm belief in Columbia's potential, but the importance of the city's historic buildings in building that potential. The list of projects that Mayor Steve Benjamin has either led, nurtured, or encouraged are extraordinary. From his cooperative approach in supporting the preservation advocacy of historic Columbia Foundation and Preservation South Carolina, and the preservation-based development of Columbia Development Corporation, to envisioning the Columbia South Carolina 63 project and the documentation of Columbia's important role in the civil rights movement of the 60s. But in our eyes, none stands out as much as his taken on at much political risk, I might add, the preservation of the Palmetto Compress building through one of the most daring and creative interventions we have ever witnessed from a South Carolina elected official. We are fortunate to have in our state a recipient of this award who has been such a faithful and dedicated steward of historic documentation and preservation among such a wide-ranging and diverse constituency. Elected official award goes to the Honorable Steve Benjamin, Mayor of Columbia. Can you just say a few words? Thank you. Well, first, I want to thank uh, now these buildings, uh, this, this building, with the exception of maybe the two chambers, were not built for acoustics, uh, so I'll try and speak very loud. I want to thank uh, Mike, certainly, for reading my introduction just like I wrote it. I appreciate that. Um, it was um, uh, incredibly kind. And thank the governor, um, obviously, for um, hosting us all here in the state capitol. The work that um, each of you do is so important. It's so important as we, as we work to tell the stories that make South Carolina special, as we talk about our role and why, while I breathe our hope and being prepared and mind and resources, what it means to be a South Carolinian. We are unique here, and our structures tell our stories over the course of time. They allow us to tell our children our stories, so indeed, the challenges of our past, they won't have to repeat them. I consider myself the humble representative of a city uh, steeped in a rich, deep, painful, and beautiful history. And it's our job to make sure we continue to preserve that story for many years to come. We sit in council chambers and we do our job. You all do the real work every single day all across the state. And just wanted to take this as an opportunity to say thank you on behalf of the people of Columbia for recognizing our collective leadership. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Thank you. Let's get a shot right here we go. All right, our next is Preservation Service Awards. The Preservation Service Award recognizes projects and activities that make exemplary contributions to the advancement of historic preservation. Eligible projects can include research, publications, education, advocacy, and public policy initiatives. Up to five Preservation Service Awards will be presented each year, and any individual, organization, government agency is eligible uh, and could win in the project further to cause the historic preservation in South Carolina. I will make a note in a program note in your bulletin. Um, though this man Simon site is of great service to the state of South Carolina, it actually belongs under the Heritage Tourism Award, so we'll get to them in a second. Our one and only Preservation Service Award goes to Clemson University Interpretive Plan. No longer is the legacy and history of Clemson limited to a founder, a family, and a plantation. Instead, with an interpretive plan serving as its guide, Clemson is now focused on sharing a full and inclusive history, from the Cherokee to the first African-American student, from its military history to the modern era, preserving tangible and intangible assets, creating sense of place experiences, and unifying a community centuries in the making. As such, Clemson is worthy of the 2018 Historic Preservation Service Award for the creation of ongoing implementation of its interpretive plan. 
Clemson University. Who's representing? Uh, yes, sir. Now, to the Heritage Tourism Award. The Heritage Tourism Award recognizes those who best use South Carolina's cultural and historic resources in the promotion and development of tourism to directly benefit the preservation of our heritage. The Man Simon Site in Columbia, South Carolina. The reopening of the Man Simon Site marked the culmination of more than a decade of research and three years of capital improvements formerly owned by the same African-American family from at least 1843 through 1970, this important property downtown Columbia operated from 78 to 2014 as a traditional historic house museum. The site's interpretive approach primarily focused on the story of a family matron, Cecilia Mann, an enslaved midwife who became a member of Columbia's antebellum free black community through a series of period rooms filled with largely non-family related items. On September 17, 2016, the historic property reopened following comprehensive interpretive enhancements. Findings from archaeological excavations and structural investigations combined with extensive analysis of historic images, manuscripts, newspapers, city directories, census records, and maps coincided with the institutional shift from a 20th century interpretive approach to a 21st century skills educational model. The resultant in interpretive format more effectively engages audiences in conveying how issues and events in our forebears' lives are relevant to our present community. The reopening of the site was strategically coupled with the 38th Annual Jubilee Festival of Black History, an outdoor African-American festival that draws more than 6,000 annual attendees. By taking this approach, Historic Columbia welcomed more than 650 guests through the museum the day the site opened. The comprehensive upgrades at the Man Simon site are illustrative of how Historic Columbia's uh, organization's most recent 21st century skills related initiatives which builds upon the foundation of other Historic Columbia projects. The reinterpretation of the Man Simon site has reaffirmed its position by providing a thought provoking cultural attraction to the capital city. Thank you, Historic Columbia. Again, Historic Columbia hits a home run. Never a surprise. Now, our second Heritage Tourism Award is the Green Book of South Carolina. The Green Book of South Carolina is the first mobile travel guide to African American cultural sites across South Carolina. Created by the South Carolina African American Heritage Commission, it provides residents and visitors from around the world a user-friendly guide to discovering and celebrating enriching cultural experiences across the state of South Carolina. This mobile travel guide showcases more than 300 attractions and sites for a diverse audience, allowing travelers to plan their ultimate customized itineraries across South Carolina by quickly searching through categories such as historic district, markers, churches, and more to find attractions that most suit their interest. The Green Book of South Carolina includes tourism sites and attractions from each of the 46 counties of South Carolina. With an interface similar to that of a tourism app, the mobile-first web-based guide features detailed listings of significant African-American heritage and cultural destinations across South Carolina, each with a narrative defining the historic significance of the site, images, map points, and a link to directions and more. The Green Book of South Carolina is a valuable travel tool for travelers, tourism professionals, and travel planners wedding coordinators, and anybody who wants to learn and come into South Carolina and learn about African American sites in South Carolina. The Green Book of South Carolina uh, brings cultural destinations, and if anybody 
has any opportunity to go online and look at this, please download the app. It is remarkable for what you can find and to go on the back rows and see what's in South Carolina. So it's with pride that we give the Heritage Tourism Award to South Carolina African American Heritage Commission represented by Dawn Dawson House, which this would not have happened without Dawn Dawson House and the team. Looking right there. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Now, the Preservation Honor Awards. We get five a year of projects. These are the projects where rehabilitation has made a difference in the communities and in the buildings that have been saved due to these people's efforts. Our first today is the Clemson Outdoor Theater. In the summer of 2017, Clemson University undertook, undertook the rehabilitation of the Art Deco Outdoor Theater. The Outdoor Theater has been a central feature of the campus since its construction in 1940. The class of 1950, in cooperation with the Works Project Administration, commissioned its construction and asked, and asked noted Greenville architect Leon Legrand to design it. He went on to become a prominent architect in Greenville in the first half of the 20th century, practicing mostly as a classicist. Following its completion, the outdoor theater hosted a variety of musical and theatrical productions, as well as being the site of the university's graduation ceremonies. The outdoor theater's rehabilitation brought back a rare surviving example of Art Deco outdoor theater, and through the implementation of creative solutions has ensured it will be around for many more generations of South Carolinians to enjoy. Um, thank you, and Clemson. Outdoor Theater, we have Steve Stovall of Clemson University, Kyle Campbell, Preservation South, Jeff Cutliffe, First Class Construction, and Jerry Bauman, Southeastern Building Restoration Group. Y'all step forward. Thank you all very much. Great job. First National Bank of Clinton. In 2016, the city of Clinton acquired the former First National Bank, a local landmark building in their downtown. The city sought a buyer for the building who was sensitively rehabilitated into a mixed-use space that would serve as a catalyst for further development in the historic downtown. Homes of Hope, a Greenville-based community development corporation, purchased the building and set about rehabilitating into three apartments, three commercial spaces, utilizing state and federal tax credits. The adaptive reuse of the First National Bank of Clinton is a first for the city of Clinton. The project has taken what had been a landmark building on the corner of the town square that for decades had been an empty space and has created a benchmark for rehabilitation of the community's resources. This building can now serve as an example of what is possible with many vacant buildings in small communities like Clinton all over the state. Accepting the reward is Don Oglesby, Homes of Hope, Kyle Campbell, Preservation South, Brett Sutherland, Sutherland Construction, and David Nocella, Group 1.6 Architects. And yes, Kyle's making a second trip, so. <laughs> Kyle does good work all over the state. The Garvin Garvey House Rehabilitation. The Garvin Garvey House, built circa 1870, is a rare surviving example of a home constructed and occupied by a freedman in the South Carolina Low Country. 
Located on a high bluff above the May River in Bluffton's historic district, the Garvin Garvey House is a remnant of a once vibrant community of former slaves and free people during the era of Reconstruction. The folk methods used in the construction of this one and a half story post and girt structure incorporate reclaimed building materials and architectural elements which highlight the resourcefulness and the skill of its original builder, Cyrus Garvin. The Garvin Garvey House is the earliest known home built by a freed slave along the May River and is a contributing resource to the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. It is located on property that is now part of Oyster Factory Park, which is jointly owned by the town of Bluffton and Beaufort County via deed from the county's Open Land Trust. With a plan in place set by Metters Inc., town staff was able to seek additional support and funding and was able to raise uh, uh, the 63% of the money raised was grants of a budget of over $300,000. I cannot say enough working with towns all over this state what a remarkable feat this was for the city of Bluffton to pull this off and they should be congratulated a lot for this. Thank you very much. Accepting the award is the Honorable Paul Somerville, Chairman of Beaufort County, the Honorable Lisa Solka, Mayor of the Town of Bluffton, Matters Inc., and Construction Consultants led by Michael Riffert. Y'all step forward. Our next award recipient is Drayton Mills. For nearly a century, Drayton Mills of Spartanburg, South Carolina was the lifeblood of the community until it went dormant over 20 years ago like many of our mills all across the state. Recent efforts put forth at this historic cotton mill have served as a nationwide example of a successful adaptive reuse project. Analysis identified Drayton Mills and the surrounding area um, as a resource that must be saved and the Sherbert Group sought to reinvent the property. Great Mills has been redeveloped through three phases. Phase one, completed in 2016, consists of 289 apartments and a variety of associated amenities. Phase two consists of 60,000 square, foot, foot, square feet of mixed commercial retail space. Renovation began in December 2015 and completed shell construction in December 2016. Upon completion of this phase, Drayton Mills became the first historic mill complex in South Carolina in which all of the contributing structures, including the often very complicated warehouse buildings that's so hard to figure out what to do with, they figured it out, were collectively preserved and renovated as a complete campus. Drayton Mills also became the largest historic renovation to date in the state of South Carolina. This formed a full complement of elements and has facilitated the community's live, work, play culture. Phase three consists of a new middle school, which is currently under construction. This year, the opening of the two-story school will act as a catalyst driving interest and investment into the redevelopment of the Drayton Mill Village housing acreage. All three phases will be con are connected via a paved trail system, which the Sherbert Group constructed during phase one. And I will like to say that since the Sherber Group took ownership and rehabilitation of Drayton Mills, the crime rates in the area have been reduced by 43% in the previous four years. Preservation works and it brings intention to the place and nothing could be said more than what Drayton Mills and what Tara Sherbert has done. Tara Sherbert of the Sherbert Group. Got it, got it. Thank you, Tara. Crest Corner Redevelopment. Crest Corner Redevelopment is a mixed-use renovation incorporating multiple significant historic buildings located in the city of Florence's downtown historic district. 
the Ziegler Building, the Commercial and Savings Bank Building, and the Crest Building. A, cre a key program element was to connect all three buildings, enabling them to function cohesively while retaining their original architectural character. Occupying the prominent northwest corner of Evans and Dargan Street, the two-story Ziegler Building was built in 1900, and over the years it hosted several storefronts. Just north of the Evans Street and North Dargan intersection, the two-story Masonry Commercial and Savings Bank building was constructed in 1900 and was known as one of the soundest institutions in the city. The center pediment of the iconic columns framing the entryway bears the date of when the building was remodeled in 1910. Built in 1916, the Crest Building was originally two separate retail spaces that were later consolidated into a single L-shaped building. The two-story brick building along Evan Street and a terracotta facade and the three-story facade facing Dargan is very similar in character. This complex renovation project maintains the historic character of the noted buildings while reinvigorating a significant corner of Florence's downtown retail historic district. Careful design was utilized to blend the restoration of historic elements, implementation of new building systems, and construction of tenant upfits that create a successful an historically sensitive adaptive reuse project. And on a personal note, anybody of us that's lived in South Carolina that used to go to Myrtle Beach tends to see Florence as something to go through. But let me tell you something, downtown Florence has changed forever. And the renovation of what's happened in these buildings is phenomenal. And a lot of it is attributed to the three people that I'm getting ready to name right now. Scott Lambert, Lampert Architecture, Ralph Trenner, Macquarie Construction Company, and Kevin Ard, New Florence Development, LLC. Thank you, gentlemen, for all you've done. Are they here? They're not here. I will accept it on their behalf, and I think I'll be seeing them Wednesday anyway. We've got some other projects in Florence, so there they are. But we have it on the record. Thank you. Now, our last award is the Governor's Award. Dr. Bobby Donaldson serves as an Associate Professor of History and the Director of the Center for Civil Rights History and Research at the University of South Carolina in Columbia. He received his undergraduate degree in History and African American Studies from Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, and his PhD in American History from Emory University. Professor Donaldson's teaching and writing examined Southern history and African American life and culture in the 19th century and 20th centuries. In addition to publishing articles and essays, he has served as a consultant for museum exhibitions and documentary projects. And presently, he serves as a lead scholar for the Columbia, South Carolina 63, a documentary project that examines the largely untold struggle, untold struggle for civil rights and social justice in Columbia and around the state of South Carolina. He has served as consultant for museum exhibitions, historic preservation projects, archival collections, oral history initiatives, and documentary films, including the PBS series, Slavery and the Making of America, and features on racial consideration, Harvey Gant and the desegregation of Clemson University, and Columbia photographer Richard Samuel Roberts, and Dave the Potter of Edgefield. Hailed as a rising star by the University of South Carolina's Office of Research, he received the campus's distinguished Michael J. Mungo Undergraduate Teaching Award in 2010 and the John N. Gardner Inspiration Faculty Award in 2015. There were so many other things on here, we'd be here for another 30 minutes if I read them all. This is a remarkable man that has dedicated his life's work to the preservation of history and the sites at which events, both large and small, has occurred. His work has brought vibrancy and life to many communities in South Carolina where historical events have forgotten and the people who participated were an afterthought. These communities have seen an increase in heritage and historic tourism because of the efforts of Dr. Donaldson. It gives us great pleasure to give the award, the Governor's Award, to our friend Dr. Bobby Donaldson for the Preservation Governor's Award. Well, Mike, thank you very much for this recognition, Governor McMaster, as well. Uh, all that Mike just described in my bio is quite overwhelming to hear. However, there is one particular note that was not referenced. Has anyone here 
Ever been to Petticoat Junction, South Carolina? Well, that's where my people are from, a little dot in Aiken County. And although I'm from Augusta, my roots run deep in this state. Uh, and as I stand here today in the state capitol, I reflect on those people in Petticoat Junction who were my first teachers in history, including my great-grandfather, whose given name was Smart Williams. And granddaddy told me about a woman from Maysville, South Carolina, whose portrait hangs in the stairwell behind us. Her name was Mary McLeod Bethune, historian, teacher, and civil rights leader. And in 1935, Mary McLeod Bethune gave a speech to a group like those gathered here about preserving history. And she said, ladies and gentlemen, the search for truth is not for timid souls. Now, over the span of my career here in South Carolina, I have been fortunate to work with a number of individuals, organizations around the state who are unafraid to tell the truth and the history of our state. We recognize there is much more to do, and I look forward to future collaborations. And I thank you for this great honor. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up another wonderful edition of the Preservation Awards. Thank you all for coming out. And know that there is cold water, beer, and wine, and refreshments at the Siebel's House hosted by Historic Columbia. So there are maps here on the table if anybody doesn't know how to get there. And Governor, you're welcome to come if you're Thank not you. too busy. I know you have a lot to do, but yes. we'll have a good time if you show Thank up. You. Thank you all, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.